Shop's a little blown up. Been working on the fence. Got the posts in last weekend. Took yesterday off. Start running the boards. That's my off cuts. I'm gonna sell those on the black market. Today's drum shop though. Oh shit, where's the truck? Oh there it is, right where I left it. We'll take a quick look at the fence. If the contractor doesn't ghost me, this whole retaining wall is coming out for block wall and granite steps. Here's the side fence I've been working on. I went with metal post because the old fence was cedar and it rotted out within a decade. Now I live a mile from the ocean, so I'll just be dealing with a different animal corrosion instead of rot probably. Brackets hold the wood, supports it on the bottom. Build the gate first before I cut those boards. Then I'm gonna do board on board. If you just run one row, they end up shrinking and you get gaps. So if you want full privacy, board on board. Looks like I beat the big guy. Gonna do my usual quick pickup. See what we're gonna get into. I imagine he'll work on the finish. I'm probably gonna tear into repair work for cash flow. And this might be, might be the wrap for that Bollywood snare we started months ago. We'll wait to open that. Bill finally got to a place where he's happy with this practice pad design. So you got the bottom ring of quarter inch ply and he wasn't getting the snare response he wanted. He needed them pressed against the head. So he came up with this spring loaded press plate. These are from toggle bolts, butterfly bolts that you would use in the wall. They already come spring loaded. A little piece of aluminum. Looks like a bolt goes through, acorn nut, and a strip of foam. And those are screwed in to the side of the shell. Pretty clever. For muffling, looks like some upholstery foam. Tried to cut it out cleanly on the bandsaw. This is the kind of stuff you'd probably need like a hot wire, but no need to spend time making more tools. So this is ready to ship. Get some cash. Cash flow, baby. These are the patients. The two sparkles are rewraps, and I guess they're a little out of round, so the heads are binding a bit. So I'm gonna strip them down, trim the wrap down. This one, I think, is getting new bearing edges, maybe a tweak to snare beds, I'm not sure. Just gonna get all three stripped down while Bill is finishing a drum over here that he oiled yesterday. And I think he's veneering the outside of these hoops. So the rewrap job is actually pretty good. Adhesion is great. I would have put the overlap under a lug. Uh, bearing edge is a bit iffy. This one has apparently all of its original screws. This one has almost all the original screws. That one is not. And it boggles my mind that Slingerland, they'll use pretty medium sized screw for all their lugs, but they use these wispy little bolts for their strainers, throws, butt plates. They're always too long. And this side uses nine of the little bastards. Really? Got some problems with this little Ludwig. Some delamination. This side isn't that bad. This one is not good. 
This whole thing's mushy. That's right where the throw off is. Two of the three voids glued up, clamped. The circle back for this one. Bill's got one of the base hoops laminated in clamps. I don't know exactly what that is for, but he's doing the same thing there. Oh uh, yeah, it's a snare hoop for one of the drums going to Steve Weiss. Steve Weiss drums. We have six shells to lightly scuff sand 320. So I guess move on to that. Is this coat two or three? Uh, this is three. Actually, I should mark that. Let's go three. So as we learned the other day, spraying reactivates the contact cement and the veneer likes to curl. So the combination of a veneer that likes to curl and a reactivated contact cement that can't hold the veneer down to the shell equal bubbles. Yeah. So the veneers got all blistery, but because the glue was reactivated, we were able to put them back down and they stayed put, or seemed like it anyway. So then Bill did a white bond coat uh, one of those drums ended up getting a few blisters, but they went down quick. Yeah, and the other ones, it's, it's actually gone really well. And then he tried to do a second spray coat, and they blistered again. Yeah, not nearly as bad as the first time. I definitely learned that having two, two wipe-on or brush-on coats is not enough to allow me to, to start spraying this stuff again. So, I'm... I'm not sure how many coats these are going to get total. I'm guessing five. I want to be able to spray the last one at least. Um, I don't know. But, you know, it's, so, a, it's a new finishing product and learning curve and all that. Current you know? plan is to wipe on <laughs> at least four layers. Yeah. And then... And then spray the last one. On one drum first. So, yeah, see what happens. <laughs> and all the others I've been wiping on with a rag. This time I'm using a... a brush and just to see if I can get a little bit more even. Um, Don't go too heavy though, you you can have problems. Yeah. And now we wait and see. Yep. They didn't start blistering until around the 10-15 minute mark. Yeah, it took a little while. Okay. Throw that in the dehumidifier and see what happens. Three at a time, or number three being done. He's brave. Yeah. Well, I mean, there isn't much choice at this point, but uh, Marsh has got to get on there, so just have to do it and deal with it. In other news, it looks like this eucalyptus stopped splitting, so that super glue treatment worked. Yeah, I that has been the most insanely difficult project but uh, I think I think I'm finally on the right side of it. It's being sprayed with Total Boat Lust. Wrap cutting. Bill has a little jig. It's basically plywood base with a standoff and a razor blade on it. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll work. I've done this before. I've just never done it on a drum that I didn't wrap. This thing is actually wrapped well, so yeah. getting it off of there is going to be probably a challenge. This area has two separate laminations in different plies. This is a Ludwig shell and it is garbage. Hopefully it's inexpensive. Because this is junk. Just pushing it down on those seams, these edges are being recut.
This whole layer is just full of voids. Junk. Drum also belongs to a local high school, so you guessed it. No budget. Cheapest fix possible. I think the cheapest fix would be a dumpster. True. She's a two clamper, Clark. Two clamper. Two clamper. Might go for three. Alrighty, I'll let that set. First edge went well, just takes a lot of time and patience. The other side is a little more problematic because of the snare beds. So Bill's switching up his jig. Swapped out the regular razor blade for a rotary blade. Clamped the jig to the table and turned the drum. And he's pretty low. thinking that to keep the drum I mean, from rocking. Oh, that's going to be a problem. Yeah. Yeah, because normally I have this on the inside as something to, to press against, whereas now I don't really need that. You could also spin your jig around because the blade's hanging yeah, off. Yeah, because I don't think I, I need something like that. I'll just turn this around and put this... Yeah, that'll probably work. That should do her. Let's see if it actually cuts anything. I see the faintest line. I mean, it definitely scores it really well. Yeah. It's hard to tell how deep it's going, but it's working at least as good as it did with the regular razor blade, so I'm gonna go around with this a few times and see see what it does. I like the inside of this shell. Steam bent, good coloring to it. Yeah, it looks really nice. Scarf joint's a piece of dog poop. Yeah. We are onto something here. Let's see. If this cuts or not. Nope. Not quite. All right, I'm gonna hit that again. That, I can't believe that just came right off. That was great. Yeah, this is so much better. Takes a fraction of the time and better control. Not worried about snapping the blade or rocking the jig. Yeah, look at that. Holy crap. This is amazing. Patent pending. Yeah, right? I have a feeling this is something that Precision Drum figured out a long time ago, so. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, we, we've missed that boat. I'm gonna go out on him and say that they definitely, we are not the first person to invent this. Maybe the second. I think the thing I like about this the best is there's no way for that blade to slip up in a no-no zone. Yeah. Yeah, me too. This is way more accurate and safer than how I started this project. It's okay. Let's see. Boom. I'm gonna finish the inside of this shell, wipe on poly. Probably by the time I'm done with that, I'll be able to put those two drums back together. I didn't film it. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's right there on the can. <laughs> My girls over there. Did you test them with the heads? Are they good to go? I have a little bit mixed feeling, right? Because, so, this doesn't go all the way. Like the head still go maybe an eighth of an inch past where I cut, right? So that gives it a little bit more relief because the head doesn't have to stretch over so much wrap. 
but I could I could fully alleviate the problem if I took this down, but then if I go too far, we risk being able to see the cut under the head. So it's like, I'm not exactly sure if I should take off a little bit more or, or let it be with the amount of relief that it's got. My inclination is to let it be. Test the red one, that was the one that was tightest. Yeah. If we wax up these bearing edges really well, that might help it. Because like it goes on just fine, but you can feel it push past the edge of the wrap, you know? Yeah. So it's still snug when it's on there, but it's not nearly as snug as it was. It also... A little bit of separation between the shell and the re-ring. Probably wasn't enough to cause that binding though. No. You know, I think this will be fine. They don't need much of that. Bill decided the red one wasn't deep enough, was still binding. So we yeah. took it for another pass. It's uh, much harder to do with a thinner strip, it looks like. Yeah, second time around isn't going nearly as smooth. But, I mean, it's gonna work out. It's just more of a pain in the ass this time around. Meanwhile, I've got green boy. Put back together, I gotta tune it up. Ish. One down. One to go. Not sure what's going on with that one. Bearing edges and the snare beds and crap like that. Oh, this? Yeah, and then um, he asked for cable snares. So I think I'm just gonna do like a pinch bar like I did for that 17 by 17 rod tension field drum I made for that dude. I made that pinch bar on one side. I think I'm just gonna do that for the strainer side and then just use guitar strings. Uh, I think that'll actually be pretty cool. And that's the kind of like, you know, kind of orchestral vibe you want, so. It'll be cool. Got the red put back together. Couple leftover parts, don't know what that's about. It's actually a split washer that didn't need to be where it was, and a bolt that was too small. Bill found another delamination on this, so got it clamped up. I think he top coated another Hellcat. Yeah, there's three more drying now. This is probably dry. Yeah, that's probably that's probably good to go. There's a mahogany drum like this too that's already. So both of these hopefully I can put together this week. And then the honest Steve White's drum should be ready to wet sand buff in a couple more days. It's just it's just sitting to the varnish here. The near had to be ordered for those hoops. Yeah, well, those those three are going to be for the Hellcats. The, the one sitting over there is for Piscataw Rangers, which needs rosewood. So I veneered one with the last piece of rosewood that I had, which is what this is. And then I just ordered some more, which is Bolivian rosewood, not Honduran, so it is, it is in fact, legal. What's up with this thing? This is that Pearl Free Floater that uh, Tom uh, Evans brought me, like, like a year and a half or two years ago now, last time I was at a muster, and he was just like, do something cool with it, bring it to the next muster. And then COVID happened, so there hasn't been a muster since then. <laughs> but there will be soon, so I think would have been near it. Um, yeah, that's that's been working out really well for us. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm gonna veneer it with something cool, and powder coat the hardware, and it'll be a kick-ass marking snare. And more orders keep coming in, so. I'll cross one off and he'll put two more up, which isn't a bad problem to have, it's just... <laughs> no, it's good, we just got it. Like, once the Hellcats get out the door, it's gonna help a lot, but that is just a monster project. Yeah. Almost left you hanging on the Bollywood snare. It's still sitting there. That box was not its wrap. That box was a shell tube. Something that we couldn't get directly from Keller, so we ordered it from Precision. Precision, good dudes. And they make really cool shop jigs. 
Bill bought a new toy because you know he needs more projects. Right. Been working on the slide. Oh shit! A seized up trombone he's been working on. Yeah. Man, that is gnarly. I've been trying to get this slide out of this F attachment for three days. Finally, just came out. So, is that from just sitting around and and. and Condensation, or is that because someone didn't clean spit out of their instrument, or both? Or uh, it's it's a few different things, but yeah, yeah. It's, so it's oxidation, um, which is made worse by whoever was the previous owner of this horn. Clearly, had very, very, very acidic body chemistry. Um, this was obviously a marching band horn used by a very sweaty person. So I mean, just looking at, like the inside of everything is green. Which seems like it would be gross, like mold. It's not. It's 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 corrosion and oxidation, because you know when brass oxidizes, like copper, like turns, copper, yeah, turns green. So it has more to do with the acidity of of the person playing it. Like it might not have been gross at all. It's just the way that it goes with brass instruments sometimes. So I'll throw this in the ultrasonic cleaner next time. So you paid a couple hundred dollars for a horn, which could be valued at... Yeah, I got it for less than $200, and it's a $2,000 trombone, so that's pretty cool. I mean, it doesn't look like it right now, but when I'm done with it, it will it will be. That's the value of the... If you buy this, this model new, it's $2,200. And uh, used, they always go for at least 1000 but when I'm done with it, it'll basically be like new, so... It'll be our new TV show. Horn flippers. Yeah, right. <laughs> Build side projects for when you need something to clear his head.